1973. She has led her unit to achieve 34 unit circle appearances, including four times in the circle of excellence, three of those in the circle of excellence prestige. She led her unit to the $1 million circle of excellence for the first time this year and is now a member of the prestigious Million Dollar Club from Williamsburg, Virginia, and a member of the Mary Kay National Area. Please welcome the number nine sales director nationwide and your number three sales director of the Emerald Seminar Independent Future Executive Senior Sales Director, Kathy Eckhart. And I thought, well, you don't have to look that hard. I could probably do that. 
And so I started my Mary Kay business. And I'd only been working for a very short time, a couple of months, and my sales director called me up, Joan Chadbourne, and she was so excited, and she said, Kathy, would you like to meet Mary Kay Ash? Oh, of course. And she said, great, I'm picking you up in two hours. <laughs> well, I had a couple of problems. Number one, of course, I didn't have somebody to watch the kids. I had to arrange that. And then I only owned two dresses. That's all I had left from that old wardrobe, and, and my good dress was in, the, was in the cleaners. And the other dress, was so ugly and awful, I cringe when I think about it now. I think I paid like eight, this is a long time ago, but eight dollars and fifty cents for it in a, in a store like Sam's Club. That was the dress I met Mary Kay in. But I thought, well, that doesn't matter. I didn't meet Mary Kay Ash. And my second problem was I was having a really bad hair day. And I didn't have time to do anything about it. So I found this colorful scarf and I kind of wrapped it around my head in this creative way. <laughs> it wasn't the best look, but remember, I'm excited. I'm going to be Mary Kay. And I was excited until I walked into St. Paul's Cathedral in Richmond, Virginia, big city to me, where the event was being held. And I saw a whole ballroom full of the most stunning, classy, sophisticated, big city women I'd ever met ever seen. Perfectly coiffed, elegantly dressed, super confident. You just knew they were super successful. And my heart dropped to the, my seat. Have you ever had that fish out of water feeling? Every insecurity I ever had rose to the surface. And I just knew that I was never going to make it because I wasn't good enough and I didn't look the part. Who was I thinking that I could do? Who was I thinking? I would have turned right around and gone home right then, except that I was riding with other beauty consultants, so I couldn't do it. I couldn't leave. And besides, I really wanted to hear Mary Kay speak. And I thought I was going to get another chance because I was going to go home and quit the next day, for real. <laughs> so I sat at the back of the room as Mary Kay spoke, and I was mesmerized by every word. And when she finished, she invited everyone to come up on the stage one by one to meet her and have a picture made with her. And my friends had to push me up there because I was so embarrassed. And, you know, as a, I, I know you've heard the story that as a young woman, Mary Kay once waited in line for three solid hours to shake the hand of the vice president of sales of the company she worked for back then. And when she finally got up to him, he didn't even look at her. He was looking beyond her to see how many more hands he was going to have to shake. And Mary Kay said, I know he'd been standing there a long time and he was tired, but I was tired too. And she made a vow right then and there that if she was ever in a position where people would stand in line to shake her hand, she would give each one her personal, undivided attention. And that's exactly what she did. I stood there watching Mary Kay talk to the beauty consultant in front of me. Mary Kay's eyes, her focus, her heart was totally on that young woman. Mary Kay didn't even take her eyes from the beauty consultant until she started walking off the stage. And Mary Kay turned and watched her walk all the way off to the stage. And then, slowly, she turned around and looked at me and kind of did a double take like this. And I thought, oh no. I never should have come up here. She's probably thinking, who is this girl with that ugly dress and bandana on her head? <laughs> but then Mary Kay said the words that changed my life. She said, oh my, you're so pretty. And that's the day I became a lifer in Mary Kay. I wanted to be a good That was the day. I grew up in the morning cry. I wanted to be able to give that feeling to every woman I met from that day on. But that wasn't the end of the story, that was just the beginning. Because I loved everything about my Mary Kay life. And I did life, and I began doing well, and even really well. I loved my unit, I loved working with my people, I loved the confidence I was gaining, I loved the sparkly jewelry I was earning, the pink Cadillac I earned to use to drive. But there was one dream that had eluded me for a long time. The top director seeing the world with the best of the best. We just couldn't quite hit that mark. I mean, we had half a million or 600, but we had to 
650. And I had the opportunity around that time to have a very brief conversation with Mary Kay herself at a company event. And of course she asked me, what you probably asked everybody, she said, what's your goal? And I told her. But then I added, but Mary Kay, if I was ever going to do it, wouldn't I have done it by now? And her response was unexpected. You remember the Aesop's fable, the tale, don't you, Kathy, about the race between the tortoise and the hare? And my mind just totally went blank. So she answered it for me. She said, well, the tortoise won, Kathy. And then she leaned in, as I just said in the video. She was at, it was a tiered seating, and she was at the lower one, so I had to lean down to her, and she leaned into me. And she put her hand on my arm, and she looked into my eyes like only Mary Kay could, like she could see your soul. And she said, Kathy, it took God 50 years to prepare me to start this company. And now he's preparing you. And now I And now I pass on these words to you because I believe that God has a dream for you. And I believe God's dream for you is so much greater than any dream you could ever dream for yourself. But you have to step into that dream. And so often, our own feelings of unworthiness or not enoughness block that dream. And I know because I've had those feelings too, and sometimes I still do. And thousands of other women have had those feelings too. In the words of Marianne Williamson, we ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? But actually, who are you not to be? Your plain small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let, let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. This is our year to shine our light and break through all of our belief barriers for all never do that. Yes, you can do that. But you have to quit believing everything you think. Because those thoughts, those thoughts that make us believe that we're not good enough, or smart enough, or that we're too old, or that we're too young, or that we're lazy. Or how about, if I was ever going to do it, wouldn't I have done it by now? They are all lies. My extraordinary million dollar explosion of stars unit broke through our belief barrier this year. It was about halfway through the month of June, yeah, halfway through the last month of the year that I saw it happen. We were working hard and things were happening, but I saw our belief barrier crack wide open. And that's when I started a countdown in our Facebook group. Now we still had a hefty amount to go. So I'm sure it was, a, it was daunting to some. But I started subtracting all the orders as they came in. And everybody kept saying, we need an update, we need an update. And every dollar, of course, we know every order, every dollar is important. So even if it was a $12 order, I subtracted it as it came in. And I, and I kept asking, are you in for the win, right? Are you in for the win? And they certainly were. They dug in their heels and threw their heart over the bar, and they were determined to win it. Everybody could see exactly where we were at every given moment. And I am sure it was, as I said, daunting to so many, but as we got closer and closer to the goal, the excitement got stronger and stronger, and the belief got bigger and bigger, and breaking barriers all along the way. And belief is contagious, and it starts with you. Everybody caught it, and miracles started to happen. Parties were popping up everywhere, out of nowhere. We were in the right place at the right time, and people just seemed to be put in our path. Willow Trimble, one of our two Queen's Point of Personal Sales leaders, had two great parties back-to-back, -back, 
the last two nights of the seminar year. In fact, your last order when it's, you're going to be famous forever, Willow. 15 minutes to one. My <laughs> anyway, now the thing is, she hadn't even met these hostesses a week earlier. I mean, they just, there they were. You see, everything is energy. Your thought begins it. Your emotions amplify it, and your action increases its momentum. And that's the magic that belief creates. And by the end of that last night, we had far, far, far surpassed the very same goal that at the beginning of the month nobody really believed we could do. Except me. <laughs> I knew we could. I believed. So go home. Dream big, believe bold, take action, and let the magic happen. This is going to be your greatest seminar year ever. And we'll see you on this stage next year. Thank you. Woo!